Without further ado, I'm going to introduce, I'm delighted to introduce actually, um, Remy Alexander from Philips. Um, Remy is one of our governing board members here at the Open Group, as well as her day job. Um, and her day job is heading the global digital practice at Philips, which is responsible for building state-of-the-art IT platforms to enable the digital transformation that is underway at Philips. Remy also leads the mobile app factory for enterprise and consumer apps. And today, Remy is going to cover how IT is supporting the digital transformation at Philips. So, um, warm welcome. You can all clap in your own homes. Uh, a warm welcome for Remy Alexander, please. Thank you. So over the past few years, Philips has really consolidated its uh, business portfolio to be a health tech company by divesting from many of the more uh, traditional businesses that the company has was now known for uh, for many years. For example, uh, the consumer electronics business, the lighting business, etc. So those are now divested. The company is fully focused on the health tech portfolio. And what I'm going to talk today uh, in the presentation is how is the digital transformation going on in Philips when it comes to the health tech space? And how has IT enabled this transformation for Philips? So there are several trends which are fundamentally disrupting the landscape of uh, healthcare technology. Uh, this means that the way we now deliver value to our customers is uh, really challenging. And there is an increased demand for integrated offerings uh, from the customers. So there is an uh, aging population, and there is a rise in chronic diseases which means that the uh, healthcare need is uh, shifting towards low cost settings, like for example, uh, more home care. There is global resource constraints and there is um, insufficient access uh, to quality care. And we are seeing that uh, um, in the current situation that uh, all of us are aware of what is happening in the world. And this means that uh, we should have a system which is able to increase access to care and also improve the patient experiences at a lower cost. And there are also staff shortages which are leading to burnout, very relevant in the current situation. At the same time, we see that there is a new era of healthcare which is emerging in which people are taking increased ownership of uh, their own health. So they are supported by technology. So healthcare is now rapidly transforming and embracing technology in many, many ways. So it is not just the consumer who is uh, becoming tech savvy. It is also the healthcare professional who is now becoming much more tech savvy and using technology for their day-to-day um, -day, uh, work. The means that Philips being a health technology company needs to really transform itself uh, from the way it is currently working today. So Philips is on a journey to expand its position as a leader in health technology solutions, as opposed to only selling products, which has been the traditional way of uh, doing business. So selling a product is more, uh, more transactional. Yeah, you just uh, sell a few products to a healthcare provider or anybody uh, who requires it. But selling solutions means that it is much more uh, continuous and it is much more about a relationship that is built with the customer and the consumer instead of uh, just a transaction or instead of uh, you know, just responding uh, to a situation. This really means that uh, the way we now serve our customers, the kind of offerings that uh, Philips provides to the customers uh, the way those offerings, all of those solutions are delivered uh, needs to uh, fundamentally change. And it needs to be really easy uh, for the consumer or the customer uh, to do uh, business with Philips um, in these uh, changed times. So the focus is also shifting very much from uh, just being a volume kind of business to more of a value-based business. And it's more about, it's not just only about, you know, preventing a situation, it's more about how responsive uh, Philips is or any, uh, any such uh, company is towards the uh, customer's need. Having said that, this means that IT really needs uh, to help enable this digital transformation uh, within Philips. 
So IT is really seen as a business backbone uh, within the company where IT is able to serve the needs of the customers uh, through speed and agility. And IT needs to play a very key role in ensuring that the connected technology, the systems and the processes that are required to drive these um, innovative solutions are available uh, to everybody who, who needs to do that. And this helps to deliver on what we call the quadruple aim of uh, health, which is better health outcomes. So it's not just about the transaction volume, like I said, it's more about what is the value, what is the outcome, uh, what is the staff and patient experience is improved, that's extremely important, and delivering at lower cost of care. And this is exactly what uh, IT is currently enabling Philips to do. And in the next couple of slides, I'll talk a bit more about uh, what is happening uh, with respect to this. So Philips integrated landscape is really the core around which this digital transformation has been built. So Philips integrated landscape or PIL as we call it uh, in short, is a set of IT applications that enable the end-to-end -end business processes within Philips. It starts from engineering to manufacturing to marketing a solution, selling a solution and also a servicing solution. So this is really the core around which the entire uh, transformation has been built. So uh, apart from the applications that uh, I'm referring to here, uh, this has all, the Philips integrated landscape has also helped the company to move into really futuristic um, infrastructure on the cloud. So cloud uh, data centers, uh, you know, software based uh, local area networks, and having a very futuristic connectivity with our uh, third party suppliers, with the hospitals and uh, so on and so forth. So these applications are really helping uh, to deliver the solutions uh, that now require different kind of models, right? We need a different type of contracts with the customers, uh, different uh, revenue models. All these are enabled via these applications. And there are a few key principles around which these applications have been uh, developed. So the first one is standardized business process. So like in any large conglomerate, uh, different business groups within Philips operated on a different set of business processes. And in order to have a unified IT application landscape, it was very critical that the business processes are standardized. So this was first part of the journey. And here uh, we had to work with uh, the global business stakeholders. We call them the business process owners in each of the areas. And they really worked on standardizing the business uh, processes. So, and this really has helped uh, in ensuring that the application landscape that is being built is standard and it can be used across multiple business groups without having to do too much of uh, changes or customization. And based on the business standardized business processes, there is an architectural roadmap uh, that has been arrived at. It is also constantly evolving because just like in any other industry, because the trends are changing in healthcare, the needs are also changing. So at any point of time, there are, there are still quite a few white spots, as we call it, or areas where probably there is no technology solution yet available. So that needs to be found out. So it's a constantly evolving architecture roadmap, but the architecture roadmap is really leading uh, this transformation. And we use agile way of delivery. Uh, we use agile scrum uh, using the scaled agile framework and uh, the DevOps. So scaled agile framework inherently has the DevOps methodology embedded in it. So it is about, you know, uh, continuous exploration continuous um, integration, continuous testing, continuous deployment. So this is practiced uh, very well. This also means that um, every bit of feature that is being built is um, immediately visible to the business users, the key users, so to speak, or the product owners. So they can look at it and then provide immediate feedback in terms of is this really uh, what is expected? And if not, then there is a possibility to correct it at the start uh, rather than uh, figuring out towards the end that this is not uh, what was required to be done. So we have uh, also standardized the um, IT tool set that we are using. 
in order to enable this agile delivery so that everything is transparent, uh, the status is transparent, uh, the data is transparent. So starting from a, you know, IT senior leadership to a business um, leadership, they can have a view of the progress uh, that is being made. Now, all these applications do generate a lot of data. Our um, business users are using it, um, which also uh, means that these data and insights can be used for continuous improvement. So the way the businesses have adopted this new landscape, uh, these new applications, also helps us to understand, okay, where do we still need to put in more uh, change management efforts? Because this is not just about deploying an IT application to a set of business users. It is about ensuring that the business users are trained to use those applications. Uh, it, it may be very different from uh, what they are used to. So in some cases, a lot of things were done manually. In some cases, uh, you know, uh, uh, older tools were used, certain legacy systems were used. So the users had to be trained uh, to make sure that they are aware of uh, what functionalities to expect. And we also keep track of the adoption of both the standardized business processes as well as the tool uh, landscape. And all this data is helping to continuously improve uh, the way things are done. And for that, we use certain methodologies like daily management, uh, pro problem solving, etc. The mantra has been configuration instead of customization. So. Uh, like I said, these uh, applications need to be deployed across multiple business groups, across multiple geographies. Uh, therefore, uh, the ambition is that we configure it as much as possible. Of course, in certain cases, customization is required because there could be some uh, local, legal, and fiscal requirements which are specific to our region. But apart from that, we try to keep it as much configured um, as possible. And the existing um, legacy application landscape uh, is being decommissioned. So every time a new application is being rolled out, then if there was an equivalent legacy application existing, then that is also being um, decommissioned. And to do all this, we may not have all the, all the competencies in-house. So we, uh, we depend a lot on our uh, supplier ecosystem. So they bring in the economies of scale, uh, they bring in certain expertise which we may not have in house, and uh, that partnership is also uh, truly working uh, very well. Now, to do all this, this is not a this is not an IT party or an IT story, so to speak. So it is extremely critical that this is all done in collaboration uh, with the business stakeholders. So the first thing is executive sponsorship. It's very critical. Without this, this journey cannot be uh, successful. Therefore, uh, all these are organized as programs and then we have executive sponsorship uh, starting from the most senior level leadership uh, within the business and both business stakeholders and IT stakeholders as a part of the uh, programs TECO ensuring that this is really a joint effort and it's a common goal so if you look at a particular application level then the common goal or the joint commitment is driven via the product owners and it's also a quick feedback loop because we are using Agile and the product owners can immediately see uh, what are the functionality being developed and they can give uh, feedback. And then there is a very elaborate process that once the IT part is done, then like I touched upon in the previous slide, there is a quite an elaborate process for deploying it to the business users, ensuring that they are uh, sufficiently trained, they understand what to do, and any feedback from them is also looped back into this whole process so that we um, continuously improve. And the white spot solutioning, uh, which is if there is a area where we do not have the right technological architecture or maybe we don't have the uh, software product itself, then the identification of that is also done together with the business. So key business stakeholders are identified and there is a uh, exercise done where the whole thing, including the proof of concept, etc., is done together with the business users. It is demoed to them. Then they are also fully convinced that it it has all the functionality and uh, therefore it can be adopted into the IT architecture. So the 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 golden rules are develop on cadence, deliver on demand. So the cadence is as per the agile cadence, but delivering the solution on to a business community or a or a country or a region is based on demand because frequently disrupting the landscape is also not good because it also means change to the business. So that has to be done carefully. 
the backlog prioritization is done uh, very well together with the product owners. Uh, the, the architectural runway is built incrementally because it is always ahead uh, of what the delivery teams are working on. Therefore, uh, when they reach a certain stage, they already know a few weeks ahead what is coming their way. And very importantly, uh, non-functional requirements are also part of the backlog so that there are no surprises once the solution is uh, uh, deployed um, into production. So this, this way of working has uh, really helped us to scale uh, the application landscape and help the company uh, serve multiple needs of solutions of uh, kind of customers. It can be a, a hospital, it can be something that comes from the government, it can be an, another type of uh, customer, or it can be consumer. So this way of working, a very modularized approach has also really helped IT scale and ensure that uh, this is really happening as per what the business is demanding. Having done all this, so what are the results? Why I cannot, uh, uh, explain here the results in terms of numbers. So some of few examples of the results that we have achieved. So the net promoter score of both our uh, B2B and B2C customers has seen a significant increase in the past years. Uh, there is a huge spike in the number of uh, touchless orders. We have deployed uh, chatbots uh, for users and the user experience ratings have uh, really gone up. And uh, new business models have been introduced together with our um, ecosystem partners. Um, in the factories, for example, this has uh, helped us build the automation for a paperless factory or digital factory as we call it. And there is a huge improvement in the production planning accuracy. So the, uh, so the whole uh, forecast to plan, inventory planning, the entire supply chain, all those applications are also part of this, which has really helped uh, improve the entire supply chain. The system availability is, is increased. And the legacy system decommiss decommissioning is currently much ahead of track. And this also results in a lot of uh, cost savings. And this has also really helped us to respond to the um, un situation, unprecedented situation that we have today, where Philips had to ramp up production, for example, for ventilators 400% in certain factories. And uh, there are also a few other uh, similar projects that are going on now. So this approach has really helped IT uh, to give Philips a jump start uh, in, in these kind of uh, Situations, which is also much um, appreciated by the business stakeholders. And last year, Philips also won the Best Digital Experience Award from Adobe. So this is for the Philips.com platform, which is our marketing platform. Uh, and uh, this is able to, this is over 2 million pages in uh, 90 locales, deployed in about uh, 35 um, languages. And so Philips is really awarded for creating this uh, top-notch um, content and how the whole uh, journey that we have undertaken to transform ourselves into this platform from the legacy uh, that we had before. With that, I really come to my uh, last slide, which is our uh, takeaway from uh, what we have seen so far. So IT is really moving away from uh, being uh, a function which is automating and supporting processes to become a key player in the digital transformation, which is enabling real-time business. So the future-ready and comprehensive application platform that has been built, uh, which enables multiple business models, uh, has really contributed to this. The systems of engagement, as we call it. So our applications are truly interconnected across the entire chain, uh, starting from engineering all the way until service, which means that uh, the stakeholders, uh, be it internal stakeholders or our business stakeholders, can interact seamlessly uh, through these applications uh, without any disruption. And with all the data that we have, it gives us continuous insights about our customers and consumers, about their uh, habits, about their patterns, which is also helping the company to further fine tune the um, offerings uh, that are there uh, from our catalog. So truly helping the company to move towards health technology, move towards the solution business model, which in turn means that we are moving away from a transaction-based model to a relationship-based model. And with standardized business processes and one way of working, we have moved away from being a fragmented uh, uh, approach to 
truly a one Philip approach. Thank you. Remy, thank you very much. Um, fascinating. I know, <clears throat> I know you and I have um, talked about the opportunity to uh, share what's been going on at, at, at Philips and this combination of architecture and agile for some time now. So it's, uh, it's great that we finally have the chance to do that and uh, very impressive work going on. So thank you for that. Um, uh, so I'm going to move straight to straight to questions. We have a few for you and thank you for being on time as well. So it gives us a, a chance for uh, tackling these questions. So the first sure, sure. One, first one, Remy, um, was could you please speak of the architecture roadmap of this IT enabled landscape is the first part. Um, what are the business systems being integrated? What are the technologies and operational systems delivered to these businesses, processes, and their interfaces? What a long yeah, question. So, but I think. <laughs> yeah. So let me uh, let me try to chunk it and uh, answer that. So, the way we are organized in the business processes is what we call as uh, uh, I2M, M2O, O2C. So, I2M is idea uh, to market, which is this is really the engineering processes that talks about uh, new product introduction. Then market to order is where, okay, we have a product or a solution, then that uh, market to order uh, has the processes to market and sell that product or solution. And then order to cash is really where we make the money and that also can, uh, has the uh, services piece. So the way the architecture roadmap is defined is also based on these three domains. So the I2M, M2, and O2C. And these are indeed very different domains as no, so the technology platform that we selected is also very distinct to these areas. So I can give few examples. For example, for mm -hmm. our um, engineering systems, we use uh, PTC Windchill, so that comes within um, I2M. And uh, for our uh, marketing website, I, I alluded to that earlier. So we use AEM, Adobe Experience Manager, and that's the one where we also got the award. Mm -hmm. Then we use uh, Hybris, uh, which is our um, e-commerce platform. And then, uh, really, our uh, transactional systems are the uh, are the SAP, SAPs. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, very very topical uh, question, uh, Remy. What are your thoughts on boundaryless healthcare information flow and its potential benefits into the world in, in terms of improved health? So Philips is already working on this area. Um, while I've not touched upon that um, in this, we we already have something called as the Health Suite Digital Platform, HSDP. Uh, that is a platform that enables uh, multiple providers to connect to a common platform where the data is available, and that really enables uh, you know uh, boundaryless information exchange. And of course, this data needs to be treated uh, very carefully because it can be uh, patient data. So we need to treat it uh, right, ensuring the confidentiality and privacy, et cetera. So mm -hmm. we do have the platform. We strongly believe in that. And that itself is, I think, a topic for another day. Yes, that's right. And I, and I should add that, that Philips has been uh, very active in our uh, healthcare forum here at the Open Group. So um, thank you for the, the contributions from Philips in there. Uh, next question. Um, uh, how, do you, how did you connect the architecture roadmap with the agile approach using SAFE? And possibly combining another question at the same time, can you comment on the benefits of agile here? Yeah, so indeed, it, is, uh, it was also a very tricky topic for us when we started. So there is enterprise architecture. Uh, so how do we make it in such a way that it can really be applied in agile? So the way the approach we selected was at the enterprise. So we really follow safe at a team level, at a program level, and at a portfolio level. So the portfolio level is where the enterprise architecture comes in, where the big decisions are made. For example, OK, we will use Windchill, or we will use Hybris, or we will use SAP. So those decisions are really made at the, at, at the portfolio level. So everybody knows, okay, these are the technologies or these are the um, applications that we need to work with. Now, how does that translate into each uh, solution is, is uh, what is decided in the program layer. And there it is really done incrementally. So that is where we have our solution architecture community. 
Uh, so depending on what the business requirements are, the solution architecture community takes it, uh, maps it to the technology landscape. So if it is e-commerce, then how can it be mapped to hybris? And there they build, they truly build the architecture runway. So they do what's most, you know, first what needs to be done. So that is that is initially done. And then that is what the scrum teams will start working on. And when their release trains are ongoing, the solution architecture team is also working. So they are always two to three or maybe even four sprints ahead of the scrum teams. Right. So that is how we have uh, kind of cracked uh, this puzzle. Right. Thank you. Um, we're running out of time, but there are a couple of questions I, I think I can combine around cloud. Um, can you share what your cloud strategy is in line with digital transformation and how do you drive your public hybrid private cloud adoption away from on-premise legacy application landscape? Yeah, so this is a journey that we have been on for um, a couple of years now. So mm -hmm. in when we started off, we really had um, on-premise uh, data centers and then we really launched a program um, to move the applications from our on-premise uh, uh, data centers to the cloud. So we did it in um, uh, phases. So we have the global applications. We also have certain local applications that are required for a particular country. So we started off by uh, moving a whole lot of our global applications onto the cloud. Uh, not everything is on public cloud. Many of them are also on private cloud. And there was a separate initiative where uh, the local applications were moved uh, to the cloud. And I wouldn't say that we are completely done yet. We still have quite a few, especially um, SAP systems are still um, in physical, you know, traditional data centers. So right. those also needs to be moved to the cloud. So that program is currently ongoing. Okay, thank you. And um, this wouldn't be an open group event without a question about uh, enterprise architects and their role. Um, What's, what exactly is the role of an enterprise architect and enterprise architecture in the digital transformation in Philips? Yeah, so I think I partly answered that question um, before. So they are really the, the enterprise architect is really the community which is uh, deciding our technology landscape. So our technology landscape also keeps changing. It's not like, okay, uh, today we have identified a set of technology and then we are done. No, because the business models are changing, um, we also need to constantly invest in this. So the enterprise architects are really working with the business stakeholders in ensuring that the technology that we choose uh, does fit the business need. So they, are, they operate at that level or they, are, they operate at the portfolio level if I go back to SAFE. And they are the ones who are really giving that direction, which is then used by the uh, teams to deliver the application. Right, okay. And I think I can sneak in one more one more question. And uh, apologies to uh, to those who've submitted um, questions, and we won't get to it, but we'll we'll try and get them answered. Um, let's take this one. This one's a bit different. What about IT system integration strategies and implementations with blockchain? Anything going on there? Yeah, this is something we have just started on. Uh, would very premature, I would say. We have just a couple of uh, pilots going on to see how blockchain would fit, uh, would fit into our landscape. Uh, more to come there. Okay, okay, and more to more to come. Next time you give us an update, maybe. <laughs> sure. So, thank you very much, Remy, for your uh, for your contribution and your insights. And there are there are some more questions that uh, that hopefully we can uh, we can get answered for folk along the way. But uh, a lot of interest in what's going on at Philips, and um, very clearly and succinctly delivered. So, thank you again, Remy, from all of us here. Virtual thank you for the opportunity. Applause. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, great. Great to have you here.